Two teams trying to get back on the winning track face each other here this Saturday afternoon as we've got the Hiroshima Dragonflies hosting Seahorses Mikawa. Both these squads desperately want to get back to their winning track. Taking a look at Seahorses Mikawa, they've actually lost their last three matches. Last weekend, they lost to Otsunomiya Brex, 81-69, and then the very next day, losing 74-65. to Right now, let's take a look at the team standings first. And as you can see, where these two squads are positioned. Seahorses Mikawa, 4-7. and seven. Hiroshima, much, much better. At 8 and 3. In that division though of Hiroshima, you can see the Ryukyu Golden Kings lording it over together with Shimane. 9 and 2 cards. That's a Seahorse squad that you can see on your screens there. And that is their lineup. Today we're going to be seeing a new import in Cedric Simmons who replaced Kyle O'Quinn who started out this season, one of the new players brought in here by coach Kimikazu Suzuki. Of course, they're going to be relying on Anthony Lawrence the second, Brandon Jawato, their Asian Kota import from Indonesia. They also have Yudai Nishida, Avi Koki Schaefer, who plays for the Japanese national squad, and Davante Gardner, number 54, two-time scoring leader here in the B-League. And there we have the starting five for Seahorses Mikawa. Starting out with number four, Masashi Hosoya. Number nine, Anthony Lawrence. Number 19, Yudai Nishida, who we talked about earlier. They also have number 22, Cedric Simmons, their new import. And their national team center, Avi Koki Schaefer, number 32. On the other side of the coin, we talked about Seahorses. Actually, Hiroshima not doing quite that bad. Looking at their last five encounters, they won four, and then they lost their last one against the Chiba Jets, 91-77. to On your screens right now, two of the key players. Four Seahorses, Mikawa. That's number 19, Yudai Nishida. You can see his numbers. And right beside him, Avi Koki Schaefer. Six foot eight center, 24 years old. Has represented Japan in numerous FIBA international tournaments. On the other side of the coin, Ryo Terashima, the starting point guard there. He's got tremendous numbers all throughout the season, but those are the numbers last November 19 and last November 20. Those, both, both those games were against the Chiba Jets. They won that first one, 92-77, to but they went down and lost, as we talked about it a while ago, 91-77. to That is the entire roster of the squad of the Hiroshima Dragonflies. We're now being introduced to the rest of the bench. Jairus Justin Baltasar from the Philippines played for De La Salle University. Center, standing six foot ten. Let's see if he can get some playing time here today. And then now we've got the starters here for the Dragonflies. Amidst all this fanfare. And there you got the starting five. Nick Mayo being called last, number 24. They also have 
The Child Wonder, Rio Sadohara, number 23. Also starting out today with Dwayne Evans, that's number 13. Number 0, Rio Tirashima, who we talked about for the squad of Kyle Milling. And then he also sends in Naoto Chuji. There on your screen, you see the three officials handling proceedings here. This Saturday afternoon, we've got referee Hiraide, referee Iwaki, and referee Leo. Once again, let's go to the starters for both these squads. The visiting squad, Seahorses Mikawa, starting out with Hosoya, Lawrence, Nishida, Simmons, and Schaefer. For the hometown Hiroshima Dragonflies, they've got Terashima, Tsuji, Evans, Sadohara, and Mayo. Most of the games, they have actually started Kenny Blackshear Jr., but today, a little switch here for Coach Kyle as he's got Nick Mayo, their big man in the middle in that starting unit. Just minutes away here from tip-off. There's Rio. As we said, both these squads need a victory, especially here for Seahorse and Mikawa because they have a 4-7 card after 11 matches. Hiroshima much, much better at 8-3. and three. They'd like to stay in step with the leaders. So a victory critical for both these squads. Schaefer and Mayo to jump it up. First possession, Terashima and Hiroshima. A lot of movement, they go inside. Dwayne Evans had a beat to the basket, will bring it out, but nonetheless, first couple of points will go here to Hiroshima, courtesy of Nick Mayo hitting that three. And then now chance of defense here from the FPCO Arena. Fukuyama. Extra pass. Koki Schaefer puts up a three. That one rattles out. Evans likes to push the pace. Will now wait for the rest of his teammates. Here's Rio. Finds Evans. Evans will try to bring it much closer. That's a nice find. Sadohara moving well without the basketball. It is now 5 to nothing for Hiroshima. Simmons there on the outside. Trying to slowly get him into the offense here of Coach Suzuki. He is a new addition, changing, as we talked about in the pregame, Kylo Quinn. Once played for the San Emilio Phoenix, that was in 2019. Cedric Simmons is a 36-year-old from the United States and scoring once again. That is what he likes to do. Evans in the open court. It is 7 to nothing. And a timeout will be, have to be called here by Seahorses Mikawa. Not even a minute and a half gone here in the first period. Quickly, a timeout had to be called by Coach Kimikazu Suzuki because his squad is now down 7-zip. First possession. Let's see what they draw up here in this offensive set. Ryo Terashima will be caught for that first personal though.
A little bit of a swipe. And Osoya made sure that the referee saw that contact. First personal foul here. And actually the first foul called in this ballgame. Handoff once again on the outside. Koki Schaefer trying to be a little bit more aggressive here. That's his second shot. Already his second miss. Evans once again. All the way to the cup. Yes! It is now 9 to nothing here for Hiroshima. Simmons on the outside with a handoff. Nishida's got to create for his squad. We'll try to bring it closer. Find space. And that's going to rattle out. Still nothing on the board here for Mikawa. Hiroshima looking for more. Nice handoff. Nick Mayo with a big slam. It is 11 to nothing. Maybe another timeout should be called here by Coach Suzuki. Two and a half gone. Mikawa still to get on the board. Sticking to a man zone here is Hiroshima. Simmons, that might be a charge. It is. Laying his body down there. And we're going the other way once again. Simmons is going to pick up his first personal foul. Nice recovery there. Rio got in his way. And he knew it. Simmons will be replaced. Seven fourteen still to be played here. Still in the first period. But a tremendous start here for Hiroshima. That's where their fans are pleased. Evans with a handoff. Tuji gives it back inside the paint once again. Kissing it off glass. It is now 13 to nothing. Let's see what Mikawa can do here in this offensive thrust. Schaefer to the wing. Lawrence, no. Mayo with the board. One and done. Every single offensive pattern here for Mikawa. Looking to put them in a deeper hole. Yes! Terashima is going to score there. It is 15 to nothing. This is probably the best start that Hiroshima has had the entire season. And also the poorest start here. And that's why they send in Davante Gardner. He is a scoring machine. Finally on the board here. But it took them almost four minutes. Stopping from the 15-foot line. Missed there from Rio. Chance here for Mikawa to get closer. And getting away for two there. Sneaky move there from Nagano. Lead's been cut down to 11. Evans asking for the clear out. Finds Mayo. Mayo can hit that shot. Gardner gave him all day to shoot. And Mayo says you're going to pay the price. Two threes right now for Nick Mayo. Lead is up to 14. Mayo once again on the outside. Poor pass, but recovering here is Hiroshima. Mayo puts up another three and hits once again. They're hitting on all cylinders right now. And Nick Mayo, he's got three threes and a slam dunk for a total of 11 points. It is now 21 to 4. That's a nice defensive stop there. Evans at the last line of defense. Chuji inside to Mayo. Secondary break. Sadohara. That's great patience here being shown by the Dragonflies. Ri will bring it back out. Shot clock still at six. Sadohara's going to hit. They can do no wrong. It is now 23 to 4. And they just continue to increase that lead. 
Gardner with a spin will come up short. One and done once again. Evans in the open court. That's a good foul there from Nagano. His first and only the second team foul here for Mikawa. They just had to get back defensively, really. Yes, confirmation. First personal foul here on Nagano. Coming in is Isaiah Murphy. Mayo once again. He's feeling it. And yes, he does. He now has 14 points to lead all scorers. And it's now a 22-point advantage. And things are starting to go from bad to worse here for Seahorses Mikawa. Under four minutes to be played and they still have just four points on the board. And we're going the other way once again. Blackshear has checked in. Blackshear will hit. Already so many threes put down here. That is three number five. It is now 29 to four. This game could be over in the first period. Gardner will give it out. Schaefer. They just can't seem to find an open spot, but hitting from the outside. Shinsuke Kashiwagi. They needed that one. That's for sure. Under three minutes to be played here in the opening canto. Mayo still in the ball game. That's a good decision. He's having a great game here. Three. A little bit too strong. Lawrence with the rebound. And here come Seahorses Mikawa. That's going to be a block called on Murphy. That's a good call. He tried desperately to get in front. He got run over in the end. And there, the contact there was... That's a good angle there from the referee to see that. Clearly a block. First personal foul here in Murphy. Coming in for the first time, number 21, Kosuke Hashimoto. Nice look there at Coach Kimikazu Suzuki, who's a little bit beleaguered at this particular stage. His squad is down big. Lawrence, that was clearly a foul there by Murphy. So Murphy picks up back-to-back -back fouls. And getting to the line now is Anthony Lawrence. Two quick fouls pick up there by Murphy. And the fans are happy here inside the FPCO arena. Fukuyama, after that miss there, keeps that lead here of Hiroshima at 22. Lawrence makes the adjustment. Anthony Lawrence, 26 year old from the United States. Standing six foot seven, arrived late last year for Seahorses, so now he's got a full season with his squad. They like his contributions late. Let's see what he can contribute here this afternoon. Mayo will lose it in traffic. Gardner will bring it up. Gardner still, and eventually will lose it. That's why you don't want a big man dribbling in between different players. Blackshear. A lot of movement here from the other players. Mayo will give it up and a foul is going to be called there on Nagano. That's going to be number two on Nagano. Had a good foul there by Nagano. Blackshear wasn't going anywhere. Nagano will be replaced and with 1.49 remaining here in the first period, Mikawa in the penalty.
Mayo left open for three. That's his first miss from there. Murphy thought about saving that much earlier. He should have. Because definitely there was no touch on the opponent. That would have been their ball. Checking back in is Dwayne Evans. And a good rest given here to Nick Mayo, who was sizzling. He's got 14 points, one rebound, one assist. Look at the three-point field goals here. For the Dragonflies, they're shooting five out of six for 83%. On the other hand, only 25% here for Seahorses, one and four. Blackshear with the foul. And Devante Gardner, big boy, on the line here for two shots. A minute 31 remaining here in quarter number one. 20 point lead enjoyed here by Hiroshima, who is now also in the penalty. So for the final 131, we're going to see a lot of free throws. A little bit too strong there. Gardner gets back down in defense, but on the outside, Murphy will miss. Seyafunyu just checked in. Listed as a power forward, but he likes to play point. Trying to show us his shiftiness there. That time, gets denied. Good offensive rebound though. Got him an extra possession. Gardner will give it out. Three's not going to work. Long rebound. And with 58 seconds remaining here in the first period, possession once again goes back to Hiroshima. Asayama will check in for the first time. That's Shogo Asayama, number two. He's a 41-year-old. He comes in and gives them quality minutes. And here comes Brandon Jawato, the 29-year-old from Indonesia, who played for Utsunomiya Brex last season. Let's see what Brandon can contribute here. Funyu to Blackshear. Blackshear from 17 feet, a little bit too strong. Time for two possessions possibly here for Seahorses that they'd like to make it count, especially since they're down by 20. Jawato launches and will miss everything. Funyu will not try to get that. He knew it was unchallenged. A lot of times coaches would rather have players come down a couple of times, break into a sweat before they take an open shot. Yeah, to take a shot, but that was an open one, yes. Difference of two seconds from the game clock and the shot clock. So maybe not that much time anymore for Seahorses Mikawa. On the other end. Funyu really making sure he's using every single second of this one. Launches will miss fire. It's tapped out. That could count. It's not going to drop there for Blackshear. But after the first 10 minutes of action, a tremendous start here for the Dragonflies as they lead. 29 to 9.
Back to the action here at the FPCO Arena, Fukuyama. Gardner on the outside. They need some explosion from any of the players here from Seahorses as they now trail. Find 20. Can they get more scoring? Jawato looking for space. He's going to get denied there by Evans. Funyu in no hurry. Seya Funyu will give it up. Open three, a little bit too strong that time. Only their second miss from long distance. Gardner will bring it down. His squad still trailing by 20. Jawato inside, will kick it out. They're going to reset the shot clock here after you hit the foot there of Blackshear. Look at a swarming defense. And Jawata forced to force this shot inside. And promptly gets denied. Jawato back on the bench. Gardner from the outside. Yes. Two-time scoring champ now. Starting to showcase what he can do. It's going to cut the lead down to 17. That's what they got to do. Seahorses Mikawa is just whittle at this lead, whittle at this lead, get some stops. But I expect Nick Mayo to be back in. He's been on a roll here today. Blackshear who has hit 1-3. Funyu back to Blackshear. Blackshear will glide, force up the issue, gets it right back. But they're going to say it's a 24-second shot clock violation. So Seahorses got the stop. Can they score? Nice active hands. Getting to the passing lanes there was Dwayne Evans. That's what you got to do. Attack early though. Josoya had the right thing in mind. Gets the defense to compress and then find the open shooter. Gardner on the outside. Watch there by Blackshear. They kick it out. Open three. And they're whittling away at this lead. Nice basket there from Ryogo Sumino. And that lead is now just down to 14. Blackshear, nice kick out. Funyu for three. That rattles out. That's their second straight miss from three. So the shooting percentage starting to go down now here from three-point distance for the Dragonflies. Lawrence gets away for two. And a timeout will be called this time by the Hiroshima Dragonflies. Their lead has now been cut down to 12. It once stood at a high of 25. Rio Terashima has been reinserted into the lineup here by the Dragonflies. They need a little bit more stability. Now that they've lost their 25-point advantage. Still a comfortable 12 points, but definitely not 25. 
I'm a little bit surprised that Nick Mayo is not yet in the ball game because he had a tremendous first period. Blackshear tiptoeing his way. He's going to miss. Nice look inside. Lawrence just turns, shoots, and scores. And that lead has been cut down to 10. Here comes Seahorses Mikawa. Sadohara. We look for Evans. Evans will get fouled there. Quickly, Hosoya apologizes and raises his hand, saying, Yep, I fouled him. Only the first team foul here for either squad. He was grasping, holding, pulling, and tugging. Three minutes gone here in the second. Checking in is Taichi Nakamura, who started a few games here for Seahorses Mikawa this season, but now coming off the bench. That's a nice find. And you attack the gentleman who just entered the ball game. That's that man right there. And Evans knew exactly what he wanted to do. Let's see if they're going to give him two free throws though. Because that looked like that foul was on the ground. So just a side court inbound. Turns out to be a good foul. That would have been an easy two there for Evans inside that paint. Almost a turnover. Actually, both these teams have done well taking care of their turnovers. Only two for the Dragonflies. Only three for Seahorses. Checking back in is Shinsuke Kashiwagi. A little bit more of a relaxed look there on Coach Suzuki. Now that his team is just down by 10. A while ago, it was a whopping 25. Rio looking for his friend. Still no Nick Mayo here. Evans will launch from three and miss fire. The Dragonflies have missed their last three attempts from long distance. Now they go inside to Blackshear. And now Rio says, let's get back on the shooting track. Hits that three there. That's going to bring their shooting percentage a little bit higher. Now they are 6 out of 12 for 50%. Still a scorching clip. Fao is going to be called on Terashima there. That's his first. Second team foul. That's his second check that. And first team foul for Hiroshima. And here comes Nick Mayo. It's about time. He should have started, I feel, the second period. Checking back in also is Naoto Chuji. So three of the starters on the floor now here. Nick Mayo with a board. Fresh off the bench. He will give it up. Chuji just checked in. And that's why he's a part of the starting unit. And just like that, Mikawa will have to call another timeout because they're suddenly down by 16.
Cedric Simmons is back in the lineup here for Seahorses Mikawa. 36 year old from the United States, standing six foot nine. Let's see what he can contribute here. He's not as quick as he once used to be. He's got a lot of smarts though. He's firing there. And here come the dragonflies once again. Getting away for two over Simmons is Evans. Evans there really using his quickness. Well, he's nine years younger. He is back up to 18. Gardner. Will he show poor pass? And nobody's going to catch him on the way there in the open court. Rio Terashima, one of the fastest players here in the B League. And it's now a 20-point advantage once again as we get to this official timeout. Watch it here once again, getting into the passing lanes. And he knew all he needed to do was beat Gardner. And he can do that every single day of the week and twice on Sundays. Under five minutes to be played here at the FPCO Arena, Fukuyama, the home of the Hiroshima Dragonflies as they host Seahorses Mikawa here today. Once again, we'd like to thank you for joining us here for B-League action. This Saturday afternoon, we've got two games tomorrow. Right now, everybody focused, of course, on these lone game this Saturday. Hitting from the outside, just beating the shot clock. They needed that one badly as Kashiwagi hits. That's going to cut the lead down to 17. Still a lot of ground to cover here for Mikawa. And they're going to have a whole lot more ground if they're going to allow Evans to just get away with a round-robin layup. Evans now with 10 points in the contest. Simmons. Kashiwagi. Now Gardner. They're looking inside. They feel they might have a mismatch there. That's going to be a travel. We have not yet seen the re-entry here of national team member Avi Koki Schaefer. That's for the Seahorses Mikawa. All they're going to need is height. So there's a foul there, but the travel came before the foul. Evans. They're still trying to look for the best shot available. Here's Chuji. Back to Evans. Evans. Put that one up a little bit too early. Nagano. Kashiwagi didn't want to get it back. They're going to give it to their scoring leader. That's a nice matchup. 
Gardner up against Mayo. Back to Devante. Shot clock down to four. Turn around three is not going to work. Simmons can't track that one down. Evans does. Open three. Nick. Not that time. That's his first miss from three. That's an open shot though. From a coaching standpoint, you like that. Lead is still 19. Here comes Kenny Blackshear. Look at a nice battle. Sadohara has also been reinserted into the lineup here for Coach Kyle Milling. Under three minutes still to be played. That was tipped. Gardner now will trigger in this inbound. And here comes Avi Koki Schaefer. Possibly in the next ball, dead ball situation. Sadohara to the wing. Fast break ran to perfection. And finishing there was Asayama. Sadohara knew exactly what he was going to do. He was going to foul Gardner. Just to stop the play. Only the second team foul here for the home squad, which is pretty good. They can set up their defense here. First personal foul only called there on Rio Sadohara. Checking in for the first time. That is Yasunori Ayoki. Just about two and a half minutes to be played before the halftime break. A well played first two quarters here for Hiroshima. As they're up by 21. Two quick fouls. That's going to be the third team foul now of Hiroshima. And the second personal. Also in the last 30 seconds for that gentleman, Sadohara. They're trying to look for Gardner. Why not? He is their main man. You can see Mayo giving him the baseline. Extra pass. Kashiwagi's not going to hit. Chuji calling out the play. Chuji still. Here's Blackshear. Chuji faking that three, brings it out. Sadohara will attack inside and finish with the left hand. No. Almost a steal. Nope. Little bump there. Ayoki goes down and a foul will be called on Davante. He's got to be disappointed. A lot of times you want your big man to give it up. And then he can get the ball back. Just run the floor. But that's going to be two quick fouls there on Gardner. He's, his half is done. Lawrence will check back in. Tsuji not trying to force the issue. Finds Ayoki. Back to Tsuji. That's great passing. Sadohara inside. Sadohara is quick. He now got six points. He's got also a rebound and one assist. And it's back up to a 23-point lead. Their biggest lead in this ballgame was 25. Nice basket there from the wing. They're going to need a whole lot more of that from Nishida. Another minute to be played here. Ayoki finds Mayo. Nice swing there once again on the outside, hitting. Are the dragonflies? And that lead quickly and promptly back up to 23. They're not looking for Simmons whatsoever, even if he's guarded by Sadohara. There's definitely a size mismatch there. Another one and done offensively here for Mikawa. And it looks like 
Hiroshima will be content to just take the final shot here. This is difference between shot clock and game clock of two seconds. Not going to be enough time though for Mikawa. Blackshear will give it up. Shot clock. Down to three. They're not going to get the shot off. That's going to be a turnover. Actually, only the third turnover here for Hiroshima. So they've done, they've done very well. Only 1.2 remaining. Time for one heave. That's a perfect pass! That's a touchdown pass and scoring there is Nishida. Perfect look there from Anthony Lawrence. We're getting confirmation if it counts. It does. 48-27 is our count after the first two quarters of play.
You're seeing some of the highlights here of the first two quarters of play. Well, all the highlights actually in the first quarter really belonged to the Hiroshima Dragonflies. And why not? They got off to a 50 to nothing start. And then it became 21-4, 23-4, 26-4, 4, and eventually it stopped at 29-4 for a 25-point advantage. Nick Mayo hit four threes there. Kenny Blackshear also contributed one. They were five out of six. Brandon Jawato inside gets his shot rejected there by Evans. Gardner from the outside. He was the lone bright spot here offensively. Complaining for a foul. Nice pass. Finds Kashiwagi there for three. So there was some resistance at least in the second period. First quarter ended 29 to 9 in favor of Hiroshima. But a much stronger second period. Seahorses scoring 18. They doubled their output. But here, a poor pass. Gardner giving up that two after that turnover. This, beating the shot clock there with 1.4. That's a well-run play. One of the few things Seahorses Mikawa could smile about. Because everything else has really gone the way of the dragonflies. As we run down the numbers, as you can see, Seahorses Mikawa shooting only 38% as compared to 60% here from Hiroshima. From three-point distance, 50% in favor of Hiroshima. Over the 38% once again here of Seahorses Mikawa. One of the few times you're going to see two from and three shooting exactly the same. Five out of 13 for both. Hiroshima never got to the free throw line. Seahorses got there four times, only making two. Turnover numbers, we talked about it. Only three turnovers for, for Hiroshima. Seven already here for Seahorses Mikawa. Points in the paint, 20 to 10 in favor of the Dragonflies. But bench scoring went Seahorses Mikawa's way, but in the end, they're still trailing by 21. Look at more numbers. Rebounding wise. 20 rebounds here. For Hiroshima as compared to just 11. Assist department 14 to 7. In favor there of Seahorses Mikawa. Personal numbers, Nick Mayo's got 14 points. 10 points there for Evans and Terashima would add 7. On the other side, you have Kashiwagi with 6, Gardner with 6, and Nishida with 5. Here are the leading scorers in the first row. We talked about the leading scorers. Leading rebounders, 6 assists there for Evans, 2 rebounds. For Lawrence, the same amount of rebounds as Devante Gardner in terms of assists. Chuji's got four, and Osoya has two. Same as Nagano. They're going to need to get a whole lot more, though. As we get prepared for the second half. Cedric Simmons will be sent in here once again to start things out together with Lawrence. That's number 19 there, Yudai Nishida. Gardner will start off on the bench right beside Brandon Jawato. Ivy Koki Schaefer now being... Sent back into the ball game. He started, but he didn't really contribute. Well, you can't really contribute if you're not really playing. He played about seven minutes. And that was all. Go, 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 
So now we begin the second half and a 21 point lead enjoyed by Hiroshima. Nice swing. Rio from the outside. Yes! And it's back up to a 24 point advantage here. 10 points now in the contest for Rio Tirashima. And there's going to be a turnover. That was quick. Couldn't even get it in bounds. And they're going to send the, the possession right back. Let's see exactly what transpired. That's a good call. Sadohara got in the way. And it went off. A player from Seahorses Mikawa. Mayo. We'll get it back. Likes his chances, falls away and hits. And it is now a 26 point lead here for Mikawa. At 53 to 27. Nagano, picking for space, open lane, finds Lawrence, Lawrence for three, yes. Badly needed basket there. Quickly they go inside Mayo. Not really a size advantage there. Koki Schaefer doing his job. Lawrence will attack. Schaefer hits. Finally hits something from the field. Avi Koki Schaefer with his first contribution here with three points. He's got no rebounds, no assists. Evans kicks it out. Suji. Nice look inside. It's tipped out. Suji for three. Yes! And it's back up to a 26 point lead. Almost two minutes gone. Here in the third, Simmons has been relegated to just passing the ball. And just when I said that, he comes up with a slam. Okay, Cedric, I hear you. First two points in the ball game here for Cedric Simmons. He also has one rebound. Chuji from the outside. Long rebound goes to Mayo. Evans. Asks for the pick. Gets it from Sadohara. They go inside. Sadohara's not going to get that to drop though. Lawrence, they got to push things up here. They're down 21. Lawrence, maybe not the best of shots. Mayo to the wing. Sadohara will wait for his teammates. Not the best of passes. Three and one break and it's going to be finished. That's going to cut the lead down to 19. Nice basket once again there by Nishida. Nishida has contributed seven points and one assist. Mayo will try to slow things down here. And then, launching. Once again is Chuji in hitting. He's got two threes already in the ballgame. Chuji's contribution, nine points. Two rebounds and five assists. Schaefer, fast, is telegraphed. Sadohara, a little sidestepping move, will kick it out. Another open three. That's not going to drop, though. Nishida inside, yes. That's going to cut the lead down to 20, but still a very big lead enjoyed here by the Dragonflies. And they know time's on their side. They know they're in the groove, not needing to rush things. Rio. Rio gets away inside, but it's not going to drop. Look like an easy layup there. Lawrence, all day to shoot. Bang. That's going to cut the lead down to 17. And he thanks the basketball gods for that one. 11 points now here for Lawrence. Five and a half still to be played here in the third. Evans kicks it out. 
Nice ball movement being shown here. Defense really having to move from right to left. Shot clock down to three. And getting that shot once again is Chuji. He's got 11 markers. He's in double digits. As we approach the midway mark of the third, Lawrence. Basket and one opportunity here. And that could bring them much, much closer. Sadohara picks up a personal. Watch it here once again. Getting inside the paint. There's a little nudge. And completing the three-point play there was Lawrence. Sixty-one forty-four is our tally. Under five minutes to be played. Sadohara, nice swing. There they are again, moving that basketball very well. I was well challenged. Mayo with the rebound, and they get it back out. On the outside, not going to drop. Finally, they clear. Nishida with a handoff. A gun in the corner. Lawrence to the wing. That's going to rattle out. May with the rebound, and here comes Hiroshima once again. Evans in the open court. Evans is going to lose it, but a foul is going to be called. Lawrence is not happy with that call. Under four minutes to be played here. And still a 17-point lead enjoyed by Hiroshima. Well, it looked like Evans might have lost it on the way in. First personal foul going to be called on Lawrence. Here comes Devante Gardner. They really need a scoring sock. Rio, Terashima, now to Evans. That's a nice swipe. And the foul is going to be called on Terashima. That'll be number two. Also the second team foul of Hiroshima. Check that, that's Kamisawa. First personal there on Kamisawa. Gardner will bring it close. He keep quickly gives that up. Schaefer, inside, pass, almost stolen. Shot clock, down to six. Lawrence looks for space, puts up a prayer. And it's a turnover. A little bit too long inside that paint. Kamisawa will bring it up. Together there with Terashima. Alex Murphy has checked in. Excuse me, Isaiah Murphy has checked in. Well, moving towards the middle of the court. And Evans thought that Murphy was going to stay at that spot. But only turnover number six here for the Dragonflies. As they continue to enjoy this 17-point lead. Exactly three minutes remaining here in the third. They got to look for Gardner. Gardner kicks it out. Schaefer for three. He's going to fall short. Davante was there for the putback. And now a timeout will be called here by the Dragonflies. Suddenly, Coach Kyle Milling senses trouble. His team not really playing that tough defensively.
Back to the action here. 2.44 remaining in the third period. Rio Terashima will find Evans. Kenny Blackshear is actually checked in. So Nick Mayo is taking a seat. Terashima inside. Finds Murphy in the corner. That rattles out. Offensive rebound there. Terashima for three. No. Schaefer will track it down. And here come Seahorses. They badly need to score. Lawrence in the open court. They'll kick it out. You can see Koki Schaefer double clutching there. Thinking whether he'll take that open three or not. That bit of indecision is really costing them. Schaefer, that's better. Catch and shoot. He'll miss though. Murphy in the open court now after that rebound. No secondary break, but Blackshear got the good seal inside. And Lawrence will be called for that personal. Second personal foul here on Anthony Lawrence the second. That's a pretty good foul though because that would have been an easy shot here for Blackshear. A minute 53 remaining here in the third. Baseline inbound. Kamisawa with the honors. Finds Evans. They got a brand new 14 to work with here. Blackshear for three. No. Gardner with the board but Gardner needs to be able to score not just pick up rebounds. Nagano. Still a 15 point disadvantage faced by Mikawa. They need to get closer. Here's Lawrence in the open court. Nice find. Three's not gonna drop though. Evans in the open court. Might have traveled. They say play on. Lawrence for three. Yes! That's gonna cut the lead down to just 12. And he's got 16 points. Just about a minute remaining. This is where you want to be if you're Seahorses Mikawa. Just down by 10. You've got a whole lot of play still coming in the fourth. Murphy, they'll go inside to Evans. Quick spin. Blackshear hits that three. That leads back up to 15. Now Mikawa needs to score here. Checking if they're going to go for the two-for-one. Gardner. I guess they're not. They want to just score here. Get closer. They got still 10 minutes of basketball to be played. And a no-look pass there from Osoya goes to no one. He's going to be replaced. Coming back in is Hashimoto. That's Kosuke Hashimoto, a new player here for Seahorses Mikawa this season. Nick Mayo will check back in. Evans will be given a breather. That's very good rotation here coming from Coach Kyle Milling. All his imports are fresh. Final attempt at the basket here for Hiroshima. Mayo falling away, hits! That's going to beat the buzzer, and that is going to give them another 17-point lead. Just when it looked like it was down to 12. A 5 to nothing blast here by Hiroshima. Gets their lead back up as they lead 66 to 
Final 10 minutes of this one. Still coming to you from the FPCO Arena in Fukuyama, the home of the Hiroshima Dragonflies, as they host Seahorses Mikawa this Saturday. First possession to Gardner and company. They need these shots to go down. Open shot there from Sumino is not going to drop. That's going to stay here with Seahorses, but still, they need to make those open shots if they want to get back here. Brandon Jawato has been reinserted into the lineup. Let's see if he can contribute. He's got a good outside shot. He can slash to the basket, though he got denied earlier by Evans. Trying to get inside. That's a good incursion. So two free throws coming up here for Sumino. They need these free throws. Curious stat here for the Dragonflies. As we enter the fourth period, they have yet to get to the free throw line. On the other side, before these two free throws for Sumino, two out of five, shooting 40%. Our Seahorse is Mikawa. Sumino is going to be short in that second. Jawata almost did a steal. And now May will bring it down. They gotta really get it closer in the next three minutes or else time will definitely be a factor. Mayo from the inside, short. Jawato with the board. Trying to push it forward. Sumino. Finds Gardner. Gardner will bring it closer, force the issue. That was a four shot. There was some contact, but a lot of times referees will not call a foul if you go up against three. Still a 16-point lead here by Hiroshima. And they're looking for more. A little bit of a ball fake there. Mayo to the wing. And Murphy will finish strong. That's what he can do. Explode to the basket. Murphy now with his first basket. He also has one rebound. Gardner. They're really just shutting that lane. Sumino. That's not going to drop. Sorry, miss there. And with an 18-point lead, Blackshear puts up a three. Bang! Now up to 21. That's the kind of start that Hiroshima wanted here in the fourth. They can knock out Seahorses Mikawa early. Almost two minutes gone here. They go to Gardner. Gardner forces the issue. He was just throwing bodies around. It looks like a foul is going to be called there on Murphy. He can't believe it. That's his third. But he did make contact. Well, he left his feet. He's there shaking his head now. 8.06 still to be played. Lawrence is going to check back in here. Well, they need somebody to come up with a big scoring sock in the next two minutes. Wow. Or else, chalk this up as another loss here for Seahorses Mikawa. Seahorses Mikawa has lost three straight entering this one. Hiroshima, after four straight wins, they lost to the Chiba Jets last Sunday. Gardner's going to miss that second. Lead is still at 20. Gonna move this ball around, use some clock. Black shear to Murphy. Nice show there. And they're using a lot of clock. Shot clock. He was down to one and it's gonna expire. Well, one positive there is they've got a 20-point lead and they used the entire 24 seconds. So they're definitely giving less possessions here to their opponents, Mikawa. And that's why Mikawa's got a rush. They're doing the right thing here. Now they're going to pull it back. They need to look for a good scoring opportunity and then take a decent shot. Like so. Sumino falling away. Back rims that one. And here's Mayo. Bring it down once again. Almost lost it. They do. Gardner doesn't want to give it up. And it's called as 
An unsportsman like Fowl and Murphy can't believe it. Well, they're going to review this one. It could be downgraded. Let's see. Oh, they're going to say it's because it looked like he had his leg thrown up in the direction there of Gardner. So you can understand exactly what the officials saw and what they're looking at here. If they downgrade it, again, you won't be surprised, but there you can see. The thing was, when a player is up in the air, he's also just trying to get his balance. But it did look like he stuck his knee out in the path here of Gardner, which actually, if you look at it, isn't really a smart thing to do because Gardner can run through you. They might be able to downgrade this. Let's see. But again, initial contact, you can see there was a big foul. And they're going to keep it as an unsportsmanlike foul. Well, there was no play at the ball. Fourth personal foul here for Murphy. He will take a seat. And this could be a big play. If Gardner makes both these free throws, they will get Paul possession. Seiya Funyu checking in. Oh, Murphy's going to stay on the floor. I like the decision from Coach Kyle Milling. Because coming up out of that foul, a lot of times, player is disappointed. He's dejected. His confidence is down. So you keep him in the ball game. Give him a chance to redeem himself. Gardner makes both. That's going to cut the lead now here to 18. If they can score another basket, they can bring it down to 16 with still a lot of time to be played. But again, they need to score. Talking about seahorses. Sumino will give it up. Gardner gets it right back to him. Sumino for three. That's offline. Nice tip. In the ball game is also Kosuki Hashimoto. They're really looking for a good shot and they get it eventually. That's gonna cut the lead down to 16. After that basket there from Nagano. Blackshear to Murphy. Nice find Funyu. They go inside. Murphy from the outside. A little bit too strong there. Trying to race down court. Nagano. That's very good transition defense shown here by the Dragonflies. A little bit of overacting there. And Seafunio is going to get two points. That was actually friendly fire, the collision there between two teammates. And a technical foul is going to be called here on the side of Seahorses Mikawa. They're going to call a timeout here though. They need to speak to each other. Watch it here. There was a collision. A little bit of acting. And Seafunyu will walk in for two.
Back to the action. Nagano from the outside hits. That's going to keep them in the ball game. Still a lot of time remaining. Definitely mathematically still possible. 73-58 is our tally. As we approach the midway mark of the fourth and final period. Blackshear will try to get inside. He's going to be fouled there by the big man, Kosuke Hashimoto. Well, they might say it's on Gardner. But Gardner got in his path. That's where Blackshear has the advantage. If he attacks from the outside in, and the third personal foul will be called there on Gardner. Only the first team foul on Mikawa. Blackshear knocks that first down. And the fans here inside the FC, FPCO Arena. Fukuyama, very pleased. Looks like they're going to get a wire-to-wire -wire finish here. Quickly, bring it down. Lawrence. Lawrence with a fadeaway. No. Nagano was there. Basket and one opportunity here. That's the kind of effort you want to see, you need to see from your players. Lawrence looking at the bench, asking exactly what they need to do. Well, first and foremost, they need a stop. That lead has been cut down to 14. Can they make one final push here to salvage this game? Hiroshima already in the penalty with 5-10 remaining. Inside, that's going to drop there. Blackshear has really been able to come up big here in the second half. He's got 13 points to go with four rebounds and four assists as we get to this official timeout. 4.49 remaining and it's 77 for Hiroshima. 61 for Mikawa. Back to the action here. Seahorses needs to score. That's a poor pass. And that just might really dim your chances of getting a W here. Nagano apologizes, but I don't think he should be staying that far out.
Possession once again here with the Dragonflies. They go inside and Mayo will be fouled. Two free throws coming up here for Nick. Foul will be called there on the 29-year-old big man, Kosuke Hashimoto. Well, there was contact. Hashimoto will be replaced. That's his first personal foul. Here comes national team member Avi Koki Schaefer. There's still some time, still mathematically possible. But again, Mikawa needs to be able to make up a lot of ground quickly. And that ground is further being increased by Nick Mayo. Mayo right now with 19 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists. He's going to make both. And that mountain has become a little higher. As we can see, Mikawa down by 18. And time definitely not on their side. That's almost a travel. Referee say play on. Nagano inside. Bricks that one. Blackshear and Funyu. Looking for a secondary break. No look pass. Mayo with a big slam. And it's back up to a 20 point advantage. Nick Mayo lording it over inside that paint. Funyu will pick up a assist. And that just might be it here. Gardner forcing the issue. Will be fouled there by Funyu. More than a few times. The squad of the Dragonflies have looked for the secondary break. Watch it here. It looks like they're going to pull it out. No look pass. Skying high there is Nick Mayo. 343 to be played. Alex Murphy being sent back in. You like that decision once again for Kyle Milling. They need him to get his confidence up. They're going to need him for bigger games. But this one is looking like a one ball game here. Oh, Blackshear wasn't expecting the pass. They're able to get it past the timeline, just in the nick. Blackshear, faking that three, finds Murphy. Will get it back. Blackshear forces the issue, and it's an offensive foul. He leaned into the defender. That was clear. He can't believe the call, though. Uh, Koki Schaefer was just standing his ground. Trying to argue his case, but it's clear. Nagano. They need to speed things up. Get to the free throw line if they can. Stop this clock. Gardner. Trying to barrel his way in and a foul is going to be called on Blackshear. That means two free throws coming up here for the big man. Well, there was some contact. Sometimes referees will let that go, but in this instance, they say no. So Gardner now on the line. Well, you can understand what Blackshear was complaining about because forcing the contact that time was definitely Devante Gardner. And he wasn't swiping at the ball. But in the end, they're still up comfortably. But Gardner trying to get his team much closer. Handful of fans here of Mikawa have traveled to the FPCO arena in Fukuyama to cheer on their squad actually that section there that you can see on the top of your screens that also belongs to the visiting squad that's why it's empty but the rest of the stadium packed because those are the seats reserved for the fans of the Hiroshima Dragonflies and they have been cheering their themselves hoarse 
all throughout the afternoon. It's going to be a wire-to-wire -wire finish here. Unless we see a minor miracle. You might not see it happen. Here's Evans back into the ball game. Finds Blackshear. Mayo on the bench. Ooh, they get a stop. Can they score here? Terashima got injured there. You can see him still hobbling. He's not even going to challenge, as you can see here. Just following. Gardner's going to score. And that lead is down to 14. Gardner now with 17 points. Let's see if Terashima will ask to be replaced. Oh, now suddenly he's okay. All he needed to do is get that ball in his hands and all is right in the world. Here's Evans for the layup. And the lead is back up to 16. That door slightly being shut here. 12 points for Evans. He hasn't really scored, but he's controlled the tempo of this ball game together with Terashima. Gardner puts up a quick three. No. Schaefer with the board. Back to Nagano. Nagano not looking for his shot. Gardner, long three, yes! Davante now with 20 points. But they're running out of time. They're down by 13 with just 90 seconds remaining in this one. Rio Sadohara will check back in. Regular starter here for Coach Kyle Milling. Terashima gets it past the timeline. Sadohara. So Alex Murphy has been rested. They want a strong finish here. Terashima with a layup and a basket and one opportunity. That just could be it. A foul is going to be called there. On the Indonesian. Watch it once again. What a quick move. A little bit of a hack there. And Brandon Jawata will pick up foul number two. Timeout on the floor. We'll be back. A minute and nine remaining in this one. In a seemingly one ball game here for the Dragonflies. Justin Baltasar entering the ball game for the first time here. As the Hiroshima Dragonflies try to put the finishing touches on this victory. It's going to be win number nine. As they try to step in, stay in step with the leaders who are at nine and two. Missed opportunity there for Terashima. Gardner. He's caught fire as of late. Nagano for three. Will come up short there. That's going to stay here in this end as they say it was touched last by Asayama. 58 seconds remaining. Checking in is Yasunori Ayoki. Gardner puts up a hurried three. Maybe not the best of shots, but in the end, that was a heat check. 
Ayoki with the inbound. Sadohara. Nice smile there together with Koki Schaefer. Ayoki. Found Sadohara. And now they're going to use clock. Funyu. To Ayoki. Inside Sadohara. And they thought that Baltasar was cutting towards the basket. Well, Balti wasn't. Turnover here. Turnover number 10 for the Dragonflies. Gardner. Not surprised he's going to look for his basket, but he gives it up. Jawato to Gardner. And Baltasar says, let me give you those two points. First of all, is we're in the penalty. Sadohara to the wing. And they're going to use the clock here. And that just could be the final score. Schaefer still sticking to Funyu. And then they say, that's enough. This game is in the record books. And it's another victory here by the Hiroshima Dragonflies as they win this one. 85 to 72. Wire to wire victory here over Seahorses Mikawa. And Mikawa will fall to four straight defeats. You can see Devante Gardner. Disappointed look. Koki Schaefer. And the rest of the squad here of Coach Kimikazu Suzuki. Well, they'll live to fight another day as these two squads face each other once again tomorrow. As is customary here in the B League, you face a, the same team twice on a weekend. As we take a look at the quarter scoring, well, after that 29 to 9 rout in the first quarter, Hiroshima never looked back. And actually, you can say Mikawa never recovered. So they were able to outscore Hiroshima in the third and in the fourth. You can see. 22-18, 23-19, it still definitely wasn't enough to be able to overhaul that 20-point deficit that they gave up in the first 10 minutes of action. Sumino there, very disappointed with his performance. Everybody, from Mikawa's point of view, didn't really come up to play here. In just a bit, we're going to be hearing from the winning coach, Kyle Milling and some of the players also of Hiroshima as they address their crowd who have come out here to support their squad. Quite surprising that the Seahorses Mikawa has not yet actually made their way to the locker room. Usually they will. The losing team doesn't need to stay on the floor. But they're staying out there. And here we have one of their players. There's Coach Kyle Milling. Naoto Chuji. Well, there's a little bit of ceremonies being done here. That's why they're staying onto the floor. Let's try to find out exactly what's transpiring here. So team captains from both these squads still here. And I think after this bit of ceremony, Seahorses Mikawa will now retreat to their locker room. And so now we're going to be hearing from Coach Kyle Milling in just a bit. Well, Seahorses Mikawa now making their retreat here from the FPCO Arena, Fukuyama. 
as we get ready to listen to Coach Kyle Milling. そして福山にお越しの皆さん、勝利チームインタビューです。まずは広島ドラゴンフライス、カイル・ミリングヘッドコーチにお話を伺います。立ち上がりから流れを掴んで、そして、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、ここで、This one? What's your name? Hi, about Konnichiwa Dragonflies. Mina de sa ichini sa kachi jacket! Kachi jacket! Kiowa attack was Yokana Des. The passing, Yokana Des. We played with a lot of energy, so it was good from the beginning. Eh, 本当にあのパッシングゲーム、アタック、え最初からねえエナジーがですね本当に出だしから良かったと思います。怪我から戻ってきたメヨ選手も今日は立ち上がりからスリーポイントをどんどん決めて相手に流れが行くそんなところでも効果的なポイントを奪ってました。そのあたりはいかがでしょうか。Nick's son was、uh, very good tonight. He has his parents here tonight watching. They flew across the country to watch him. So I know he was very ready to play. So I'm sure they are happy, just like you guys are happy. And we're all happy for him. So, this is Nick. Nick, I'm going to give you a performance on the screen. I'm going to give you a performance on the screen. I'm going to give you a performance on the screen. I'm going to give you a performance on the screen. I'm going to give you a performance on the screen. 本当にもう彼も準備万端でこの試合に臨んでいました。本当に私もですね本当に今日の活躍本当に素晴らしいなと思いました。今日はオフェンスそしてディフェンス両面でヘッドコーチとしては理想的な展開になったでしょうか。No, it wasn't perfect. We can always do better and work on things. And、uh, come back tomorrow, and hopefully even play better than what we did tonight. But today was good. But I want tomorrow, Ashta, to be even better. Eh, 完璧とは言えませんので、明日しっかりとですね、今日今日以上にですね、もっともっといいバスケットボールを皆さんにお見せできればなと思います。それでは最後に、今日福山に集まったファンの皆さんに向けて最後一言お願いします。福山 Dragonfly and Wa Saiko des. Natatashi no Chikara de Katsu Koto ga deki mashita. Gashimas, mita kinsayo, and we see you tomorrow. Natasha, thank you. Arigatou gozaimas. Arigatou gozaimas. Kyle Miring, head coach, des. Well, very good statements there from Coach Kyle Milling, as he said. Well, definitely, they were passing very well. They shot very well in the first quarter, but he said it definitely was not an easy win. It's still a win, and in the end of the day, they're going to be moving to nine and three. And he says that he's hoping his team comes up with an even better performance tomorrow. As they play Seahorses Mikawa back to back. Right now, here we have Rio Sadohara.
あの非常にチームにエネルギーを与えるプレーを見せたかと思いますが、ご自身のプレー振り返っていかがだったでしょうか。あそうですねあのやっぱ前半のところは自分でもこう千葉戦の時にちょっと不甲斐ない結果になってしまったので、えっとまあ、チームとしてもそうですし、えっと、自分としてもアグレッシブにプレーしようというのを心がけてたのでそれが前半ああいうプレーにつながってよかったなと思います。リバウンドにも激しく飛び込んでそしてコーナーからの素晴らしいドライブというのもありました改めてそのあたりご自身振り返っていかがですかそうですね前半はあのー、いい形でドライブだったりパスだったりとかできたんですけど後半ちょっと、あのーまあ、体力的にもあのきつくなってきてて、あのー、そういうプレーができてなかったので一試合通してそのプレーができるように今度,が今度から頑張りたいなと思います。今日は福山に2400人を超えるファンの皆さんがいらっしゃいました。明日もここ福山で試合があります。ファンの皆さんに向けて最後一言お願いします。そうですね。まずあの一ヶ月間、まあバイビー約一ヶ月間かバイビークでこう試合がなかった。So what Tsuhada was talking about was, first of all, is he was very surprised at their start. He was happy, but he was surprised that they had a very good start. Actually, as we talked about it, they were up 15 to nothing to begin the first quarter. And then he continued to say that the first half, they really played very well. The second half, it was bad. But because they had a very good first half, they were able to make up for those mistakes that they had in the second. And in the end, they would win this one. 85 to 72. Well, the fans are still happy despite the fact that they got outplayed supposedly in the third and fourth. But that huge first quarter, which is 29 to 9, really helped them out. And here is Dwayne Evans. それではエヴァンス選手にお話を伺いますエヴァンス選手も今日は立ち上がりからあらゆるプレーでチームに流れを引き寄せましたご自身のプレー振り返っていかがですか、うん、<笑> It was okay uh, I mean I played well for the first half and as a team we played well but、um, in general you know we need to keep the same intensity and try to get a win tomorrow そのためのおっしゃる通り出だしからいいプレーができたんじゃないかなと思いまして本当にチームが一丸となって今日勝利をつかめたと思っていますのでしっかり明日もですね同じ今日のディフェンスとオフェンスをしっかり繰り広げて明日も勝ちを狙っていきたいと思います。これでチームとしては九勝三敗ということになりました。今シーズン広島に加入をして改めてご自身のプレーここまで振り返ってみて手応えいかがでしょうか。ここまで良かった、うん、けど今から<笑>頑張り塗,塗ります塗れなきゃいけない<笑><笑>最近めっちゃ楽しかった、うん、チームメイトとみんなと、うん It's fun. Sorry, that's all I got. ちょっと疲れてる。え、チームメイトのみんなと一緒にあのこれからもですね頑張りたいと思います。チームとしてはまた上位に食い込んでいくためにもこの後また勝利必要になってきます。今後に向けて意気込みを最後お願いします。Yeah,、uh, game two is、uh, very important.、Um, you know, last week we were able to win on Saturday,、um, but Sunday, you know, we, we weren't able to pull out two wins. So hopefully tomorrow we have the same energy and,、uh, you know, hopefully we can get two wins for our fans here. えー、そうです本当にこの前の、えー、千葉戦はですね、えー、土曜日勝てたんですけども日曜日、えー、負けてしまったので今週はですねしっかりと、えー、今日と同じ、えー、強度でしっかりと明日もですね最後まで戦い抜いて明日もつ、えー、2勝できればとは、はい、思っています。おめでとうございましたありがとうございましたエヴァンス選手でした<笑>さあそれでは続きましてゲラソ選手お越しくださいお
Dwayne Evans is such a fierce competitor, but when you give him a mic, he turns really shy. But you can see, he talked about the importance definitely of tomorrow. They need another victory because of what happened last weekend. It wasn't a good encounter for the two-day affair, but here they're hoping to be able to get back-to-back -back victories. Again, Seahorses Mikawa, and now we have Rio Terashima. オフェンス、ディフェンス、そうですね、あの、ま、ターンオーバーがあの、いつもに比べて少なかったんで、それは自分の中でも評価できてるんですけど、まだまだあの、足りない部分が多いんで、そこをもっともっとあの、うまくなって、あの、チームに貢献したい
。そうです。本当にあの、えー、両親と、えー、妹も来てるんですけども、妹に本当に、えー、ここに来て自分のプレーを、えー、見せることができて本当に嬉しいな嬉しく思っています。家族もですね本当に広島を今堪能していまして、一週間ほどいるんですけども、えー、故郷に帰ると、えー、お姉さんもいらっしゃるので。本当に今日いいプレーができていいプレーを見せ,て見せれてですね本当に良かったと思います家族の前で素晴らしいプレーを見せてくれました明日も期待したいです画面の向こうそして今日会場にお越しのブースターの皆さんにメッセージお願いします、uh, Yeah, thank you guys for your support throughout the whole season、uh, Great being back here playing in front of you guys and、uh, hopefully we can get a win tomorrow So thank you guys 本当に今日皆さんの前でプレーすることができて本当に良かったと思います明日もしっかりと頑張りますのでご声援のほどよろしくお願いしますありがとうございましたミックメイヨ選手でしたありがとうございましたそれでは続いてはですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですね、ですとドラゴンフライス。They led 15 to nothing before finally conceding the first basket here to the squad of Seahorses Mikawa. And then from there, it didn't stop. It went up to 21-4, 23-4, all the way up to 29-4. That 25 point lead will be the biggest lead that they had in the ballgame. But they led just about by 20 all the way. There is Nick Mayo once again. Knocking down another three. He's definitely inspired. There's another one of those four threes in the first quarter. He would take a seat. He'd play in the second part of the second. As you see, Brandon Jawato get blocked there by Dwayne Evans. Davante Gardner would come in and he would. Add a scoring sock, which he normally does. First period ended in favor of Hiroshima. 29 to 9. The half ended 48 to 27. Still in favor of the hometown Dragonflies. Terashima, nice find. Chuji knocks that three down. Poor pass. And Rio will sail in for two. This is the final play of the first half, and they were able to get a real sneaky score there. Yudai Nishida gets two points right before the break. Both teams were recharged here. To begin the second half, and Anthony Lawrence, the second, drains that three. Perfect pass coming from Yudai Nishida. Touch pass goes to Chuji, and Chuji knocks down that three. More action here. Simmons, just when I said that he wasn't really contributing too much, comes up with a big slam there. But only two points for Cedric Simmons, really. Just a shade of what he once was, especially when he was drafted in 2006 by the Hornets. 15th overall. Extra pass, Lawrence for three. And then Isaiah Murphy. He's one heck of an athlete. And then Devontae Gardner started to go to work. Helped out by his teammates. Nice basket there from Natoshi Nagano. 
They get it right back. And Nagano hits that three. Overall shooting percentage. Hiroshima shot 52% from the field. Only 43% for Seahorses. And we're going to break it down in twos and threes a little bit later on so you can see it. But it's going to be 58% from two as compared to just 50 for Seahorses and 44 to 37% from three. Nick Mayo continues his hot shooting, continues his great day. As we said, he's inspired with the presence of family here inside the FPCO Arena, Fukuyama. Jawato gets beaten there. And Rio heads to the free throw line. He will not complete that three point play, but the final score in this one is 85 to 72. And a victory here for Nick Mayo, Sadohara, and the rest of the Hiroshima Dragonflies. Here are the numbers we were talking about earlier. You can see 53% as compared to 50%, 44 as compared to 37%. Free throws, Hiroshima actually only got there five times. On the other side, Mikawa got there 16, making 11 at a 68% clip, which is pretty good. But again, they were not able to overhaul this disadvantage. Only 10 turnovers for Hiroshima, 13 for Mikawa. Points in the paint. Plus 8 here for Hiroshima. Plus 20 for Seahorses Mikawa as far as their bench scoring was concerned. But the starters couldn't get the job done. And so that's why they're going to lose by 13 here this Saturday afternoon. Looking at the leading scorers for both these squads. You can see Nick May with 22 points. Davante Gardner leading his squad also with 22, so they cancel each other out. Kenny Blackshear had 13 points. Terashima also contributed 12 here for the Dragonflies. On the other side, for Seahorses, Anthony Lawrence II had 16 markers. And Nagano also in double digits with 10 points. Let's see if we can show you that graphic which I just talked about, here it is. Those are the leading scorers. And the rebounding story, Evans had six. Check that, Evans had eight. Mayo had six and Blackshear had four. So the three imports really contributing in the rebounding department. Devante Gardner had six boards, Hosoya and Lawrence. Contributing four apiece. In terms of the assists, Chuji had seven, Evans with five, and Blackshear with four. In a losing effort, Hosoya would come off the bench and give them six assists. Nishida had four and three assists for Devante Gardner. And here we got the three different categories. So leading scorers, Nick Mayo and Devante Gardner. Rebounding. It is Evans and Gardner. And in the assist department, it's Chuji and Hosoya. So Seahorses Mikawa will drop to 4-8. and eight. Hiroshima with a victory here will improve to 9 victories against 3 setbacks. As they win here, 85-72. And again, these two teams face each other again tomorrow in another doubleheader in the B-League. That's going to do it here for our coverage. In behalf of everybody from the B-League, Anthony Stey saying thanks for joining us, everybody. Till tomorrow, take care. Have a good afternoon ahead. God bless.